Hello! Um, I'm Amanda Burns, and this is my final video project for marketing CP CHPM 2605. I'm going to start with Practice Management Binder, and within it I have all my tabs, which are Vertebral Subluxation, um, Wellness Development Care, um, Subluxation Condition Based Care, Chiropractic Spinal, Functional Neurology and Chiropractic, Mechanism Systems, uh, mechanic systems, bad medicine, and new vitalistic systems. And this is my practice management binder, which contains my outline for pre-visit, visit one, healthcare classes, report of findings, and progressive exam. And here are all my research articles, which I'm super stoked about. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, um, so during the pre-visit, I would first welcome the patient into on behalf of myself and the staff, and I would let the patient know that my job is to provide them with the finest health care and offer many informative uh, and entertaining educational opportunities, such as weekly activities and others. I would explain them to that the first order of business is for them to fill out all the paperwork and let them know that it is very important that they fill it out entirely, as it is critical in the development of a specific effective care plan for the patient's care with the chiropractor, as well for legal reasons. Um, I would ask them to read it very thoroughly before turning in the forms to make sure that they understand and are aware of the intent behind them. On the first visit, I would explain to the patient that what the chiropractor, what chiropractic is and explain that it's a therapeutic manipulation that focuses on the spine with a specific specificity on nervous system function. I would also explain subluxation and, um, and its effect on the expression of health. Additionally, I would explain to the patient the five components of the vertebral subluxation complex, kinesiopathophysiology, or the improper biomechanical movement of spinal joints. The second, myopathophysiology, which focuses on the muscle physiology and the ways in which the muscle influence alignment of vertebrae, either through tension, weakness, or lack thereof. The third being pathophysiology, or ways that diseases that can cause symptoms in subluxation. The fourth, fourth histopathophysiology, um, which is tissue changes that can include edema, osseous changes such as bone spurs, and neuropathophysiology, which is the interference to the nervous system, which is ultimately how chiropractic adjustments have the, great, have the greatest effect to positively change the patient's health. The next step of this exam would involve analysis of the patient's back to evaluate the spine for subluxation. I would use something like a titron to detect subluxation as well as a visual educational tool for the patient. I would also conduct orthopedic and motion palpation exams to analyze the vertebral subluxation complex. I would then move on to x-ray capture to examine the patient's spine for abnormalities, pathologies, curvature, and joint angles. Um, next is the report of findings, and this is where I would present the clinical findings from the exams. I would explain to them how the beginning of care can affect their health in a positive way and how it may eliminate the symptomatic problem and cause relief. What we need to do in the report of findings is considered to be the most valuable visit in the office, and it's crucial for the patient to understand the problem of subluxation and so that they can make the proper decisions regarding the direction of their care. I would explain to the patient the four aspects of their case, such as cause, the severity, the recommended care, and their prospects for correction. I would explain to them the assessments associated with the five components of vertebral subluxation according to the pathology assessments. I could tell them what I found on motion palpation or compensations that they may have noticed when I um, noticed their range of motions. For neuropathophysiology assessment, I could show them diagrams that explain how their nerve roots are not functioning correctly, where I could fix the problem. From the myopathophysiology assessment, I could talk about where I found muscle spasms and weakness and how this affects the vertebral subluxation complex and how it affects the alignment of the vertebrae and other bones. For histopathophysiology, I could explain to them their x-rays. I can show them pictures from their report of findings that would show them different phases of the degeneration that they're in. For example, their subluxation fixation, degeneration, and what phase they fall into. Um, phase one being serious to phase three being extreme, and I would show them where they fall into these categories. If they do fall into one of those, I would tell the patient the prognosis. After that, for spinal pathophysiology, I would also ask them to talk about their subluxation degeneration within the analysis of x-rays, and this would be a specific focus of the curves of the spine and spinal decay resulting from the vertebral subluxation complex. I would also strongly recommend that they attend the healthcare classes. I would explain to them that these classes take place every Wednesday and they're just one hour long. During this class, I can better explain to them what chiropractic is, how it can help them, and how uh, it can also better explain the vertebral subluxation complex and how it affects them and everybody they may know. 
I would also tell them that I'm going to provide them with some extra seats so they can bring a friend or family member. At the end of it, uh, the class, I would explain to their family and friends how they can come in for an assessment as well as sign up for care. I would then use the fire drill to get them to sign up for care. Um, back to the progressive report, it takes place after we finished with the treatment of their current symptoms. This might be after one month of care, if I had them come in for a month for three times a week or something similar. We would then uh, reassess them and let them know the patient progress. Finally, I would explain my office policies as well as the cancellation notice policies to the patient. First, I would explain that we give a 24-hour window to cancel their appointment. If they decide to cancel without notice, we give them one free pass because things come up in life, such as family emergencies and things. Um, I want to make sure to explain to them that this is a commitment partnership, where the practitioner is committed to giving them the best possible care, and the patient is committed to show up to their scheduled appointment. I would also explain to them that they could decide to pay by month and receive a discount or pay upon each visit and just pay a flat rate. All of these policies and procedures are in the Office Practice Management Binder. Um, and that concludes the office visit. Yay, chiropractic! Let's see.